Okay, seems that the live stream is up and running. Computer recording done. Cloud is started. Backup is rolling. Okay, Sergeant Katowski, you may begin with your opening statement. Good morning, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. At this time, would Council staff please turn on their video? Please place electronic devices on vibrator silent. Thank you, Chair. We are ready to begin. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm Council Member Francisco Moya, Chair of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. Uh, today, we are joined remotely by Council Members Gredenchek, Rivera, Reynoso, uh, Levin, and Ku. Today, we will vote on the Special Flushing Waterfront District proposal, which was heard by this subcommittee on November 9th. Before we begin, as a reminder, council members with comments or questions should use the Zoom raise hand function and will be recognized in order. Uh, today, we will vote to approve LUs 694 and 695 of the Special Flushing Waterfront District relating to property in Council Member Coos District in Queens. The, applicant, uh, the application seeks a zoning map amendment to establish the Special Flushing Waterfront District, including the rezoning of existing uh, C42 and M31 district to an M12 R71 district, as well as a zoning text amendment to create special district rules regarding use, bulk, and parking, <coughs> and related modifications to the underlying district regulations, including the establishment of a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing options one and two. The proposal is intended to facilitate the development of approximately 1.6 million square feet of residential space, including 1,725 dwelling units, 1 1.4 million square feet of commercial space, and 22,000 square feet of community facility space. The district would include a new private roadwork to facilitate access to the various development sites and the new waterfront regulation in order to create 2.8 acres of publicly accessible open space, uh, also a new public plaza and a 40 foot wide shore public walkway along the Flushing Creek waterfront between 36th Avenue and Roosevelt Avenue and 40th Road. Uh, Council Member Koo, who represents this area of Queens, has worked tirelessly to achieve the best possible project for his community. Uh, to that end, and due to uh, Council Member Koo's efforts, the applicant has committed to maximizing uh, affordable housing on the development site four. Development site four is the only site seeking additional residential floor area under the proposal and is expected to include 300 units. The applicant will work with uh, city and other public agencies to secure funding through existing subsidy programs and other available funding to achieve that goal. At a time when so many neighborhoods are struggling, this project would provide an economic lifeline in the form of union employment and tens of millions of dollars in additional tax revenues to the city of New York. The choice for better jobs, a larger waterfront, open space, local hiring, and additional affordable housing as compared with the as of right option, which offers none of these is clear. Uh, at this time, I would like to take the opportunity to recognize uh, my colleague, Council Member Ku, uh, for some remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Moya. I'm very happy to announce that last night we reached an agreement with labor groups and the applicants that will include union jobs in special flushing waterfront district with, B, uh, with both 32 BJ and Hotel Trade Council. This was a hard fought agreement, but at the end of the day, the applicants and the labor groups were able to arrive at a place that will include group paying local jobs for flushing community and on a grander scale, a commitment to our economic recovery at a time when we need it most. We are getting a commitment from the development team with ties to our community and <clears throat> who will finally connect downtown flushing to this waterfront via an expanded promenade with playgrounds, pedestrian trails, and open space. We are getting 30% affordable housing on the rezone portion on the site, uh, on site four. Importantly, the applicants have entered 
into agreement with the city to further engage in discussions over the next three years with HPD and the council to work on ways to secure financing so we can maximize the amount of affordable housing on site. Sadly, the pandemic has caused cuts across the board. So it was necessary to look to the future when we are not so set back by budget cuts, where we can work on securing funding for more affordability. To name some benefits, we are getting a commitment to sustainable sewage infrastructure that won't contribute CSO. We are getting workforce agreements with the Chambers of Commerce or Queens and the Flushing Business Improvement District. And both of our larger developments at Bland Houses and Latimer Gardens. We are getting new youth mentoring space for La Jornada Food Pantry. And most importantly, we are getting a, an, an opportunity to provide economic stimulus to our community for the future. I would like to thank Speaker Johnson, Chair Moyer, Chair Salamanca, Jason Goldman, Ebony Mies, Anthony, Waju Mann, Genevieve Michael, Amy Leviton, John Douglas, Arthur Hu, Julie Lubin, and the entire land use division. I would especially like to thank the applicants and the labor unions who came together despite a lot of misinformation and misleading rhetoric from agitators. This agreement goes to show that the real progress can be made if only we decide not to blame, accuse, and demand, but to talk, listen, and to compromise. Thank you. I will urge all my uh, members in the subcommittee uh, to vote affirmative on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Peter. Um, I now call for a vote to approve LUs 694 and 695. Council, can you please call the roll? Chair Moya. Aye. Council Member Levin. Uh, I vote aye. Council Member Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I want to begin by thanking Councilmember Ku and the Chair, Councilmember Francisco Moyo, for all their work to get this project to where it is now. When the project initially came to the Council, there was not a single tangible public benefit associated with it. And due to the negotiations with the applicant, we now have a guarantee of union labor and potentially for a more income restricted building <clears throat> on the single site being upzoned. However, as I expressed during the hearing, I have significant problems with this project and I don't see the proposed project or the as of right scenario as a true win for the Flushing community. This is not just a failure by the applicant team, but an indictment on New York City's approach to land use and planning. The development of over 1,000 condos priced at seven figures does absolutely nothing to dig us out of our housing crisis. The ability of a developer to move forward with such a scenario without any action from the city council speaks to a complete abdication of responsibility by the Department of City Planning to proactively address our housing crisis through its zoning and land use tools. The development community must also step up and I wanna make it clear that I do not view the concessions made by the developer to be civic minded, but rather a greedy exploitation of New York City's terrible planning and land use processes. It is long overdue for the city to develop a comprehensive plan in participation in partnership with communities that would lay out long-term strategies for addressing issues related to housing, transportation, healthcare, open space, resiliency, and economic development. I urge this council to introduce and, ad and adopt legislation to enact such a plan as soon as possible. I also wanna express my disappointment that this council continues to have discussions about bucking member deference exclusively when projects are situated in communities represented by members of color. 
I have watched this council approve plenty of problematic projects in districts represented by white members without any comment at all. I have voiced opposition to practice, uh, to the practice of member deference in the past. But if we're going to have that conversation, I expect that we do so in an inclusive and equitable way, not just when it's politically convenient. Voting for this project is a vote for union labor and the potential for affordable housing to be incorporated into this project. Voting against it would result in essentially the exact same project, but without these benefits. At a time when the city is facing double digit unemployment, it is my responsibility to ensure that we are creating well-paying jobs for New Yorkers where we can. And due to the significant work by 32BJ and HTC, we will receive that with this project. This is definitely a lesser of two evils um, in this vote, and I'm uncomfortable with it. However, the as of right scenario is clearly the worst option, and I am therefore voting yes on this application. Thank you, Chair. Councilmember Gordenchik. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote, Chair Moya? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, first, let me congratulate uh, everybody who was uh, involved in bringing uh, this critically important project for New York City uh, to the state where it is today. I want to congratulate uh, my colleague, Peter Ku. I want to congratulate the chair. I know both of you have been working uh, many, many hours on this and the land use staff um, as well. And I want to thank them for keeping me informed and uh, everybody that was involved with this. I grew up on the edge of uh, Flushing and uh, many times I walked from what is now Peter Ku's district uh, into what is now uh, Chair Moya's district uh, and looked at that forlorn piece of property that we're discussing today. I walked across the bridge because I lived in a two fair zone and I was often going to see the Mets get pounded at uh, Shea Stadium. Um, you know, we have done a lot in recent decades to reclaim our waterfront from uh, what has really been a walled off situation. Um, the best example in Queens is the waterfront in Long Island City, where you would come to this, the end of the street and there would be a concrete batching plant or something like that. And there was absolutely no access to the waterfront. And that is the situation that exists um, in Flushing today. Uh, the Flushing River, um, probably more of a tidal estuary than a river, um, there's no way to get to it. And um, the largest group of people that live there are public housing residents. Uh, at Bland Housing, where there are 400 apartments. So I'm voting for this. Uh, I want to thank uh, Peter Koo for his outreach to me. Um, and I know, uh, as as Chair, uh, as uh, uh, Councilman Reynoso just said, um, this is a much better project than we would have had as of right. And we are getting also a, a park in, in an area that is desperately in need of public parkland as well. And I, I see that the, the doubling of the width of the um, promenade along the waterfront will also be a public park-like amenity. So with congratulations to all involved and remembering uh, my dear friend, mentor, and former boss, Claire Shulman, this was the last project she worked on. I uh, happily vote aye. Thank you. Councilmember Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I want to thank Chairs Moya and, and of course, Salamanca, Councilmember Ku for working together with the applicants and the labor leaders to achieve a deal that includes better jobs and potential affordable housing opportunities for low income New Yorkers. And I just want to echo what my colleague Councilmember Reynoso said of, of the issues and why we're voting yes here today. I, I personally need to review more of the details announced this morning by Council Member Ku and the applicant, and I look forward to examining the agreement before our full council vote at tomorrow's stated meeting. So with that in mind, and with some of the comments previously made, I vote yes. Vote of five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. The item is recommended for adoption by the full land use committee. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, that concludes today's business, and I would like to thank uh, my colleagues. Uh, congratulations again to Council Member Ku, um, also to the subcommittee council, uh, land use and other council staff, and the sergeant at arms for participating in today's meeting. But in particular, uh, I'd like to really recognize the incredible work that was done uh, by our land use staff, uh, Raju Mann, uh, who continues to uh, always uh, amazed at how we can uh, do this uh, through this period that we're uh, experiencing now through COVID. We have all the land use staff has gone through some 
some serious uh, uh, rezonings that we've been uh, working on, but they truly work 24 uh, seven. So thank you, Raju, and to John Douglas and Amy Leviton uh, and everyone uh, from the land use staff for your work on this project uh, and helping it uh, bring it home. Uh, so with that, thank you. Uh, this meeting is hereby adjourned.